Daily Solutions podcast, walking down the salty streets. Salty mess water spills over the pristine sides of the collective consciousness. Daily Solutions podcast, Daily Solutions podcast. All right. Welcome. I'm Graham. I'm Ashkan. And today's question is dress code question <laughs> mark. Good, good, well formulated question. <laughs> Succinct. <laughs> I like it. Um, for us, no. Period. period. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly exclamation point. Um, I guess that's not even really true. We have we have like a, the most minimal dress code that you possibly could. You like wear something, and preferably doesn't have holes. And isn't dirty. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a few parts of this dress code situation, I would say. Yep, there's the question mark, <laughs> there's the dress, and there's the code. <laughs> All right, so let's 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 work on the dress for now. Um, so there's uh, there's kind of dress codes from your perspective of like running a business and and kind of the customer service experience, and then I'd also say there's some kind of HR sort of liability stuff with dress codes uh, that comes into play. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, which one do you want to talk about first? <laughs> that was only two? Yeah. I thought you were going to say more perspective. No, that's so. it. What, a, what's a, what else? Um, there's the actual convenience uh, of cleaning up float rooms oh, like yeah. from the, okay. the employee, the yeah, employee yeah. standpoint sure. of, of convenience dress codes. Okay. Dress suggestions almost, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's talk about the legal side since that's really boring. Yeah. So this varies from place to place. So you should really like look at your own local rules about this. But there are some places that have rules for closed-toed shoes, for example. I mean, it's mostly about shoes, I think. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you need to wear shoes or can you go barefoot? You know, there's a lot of people who work in float centers who, who go around barefoot. Um, that might be something that you need to look into in your area. I know it's, it's for Oregon, I don't think it matters that much. We like looked into it. But there's other states mm-hmm. that have a lot stricter uh, basically liability issues. Like if someone's not wearing shoes and something happens to them, especially because you're dealing with chemicals, you know, if you're, if you're using hydrogen peroxide or something uh, like that, or even things like filter fresh that are kind of made of uh, different acidic materials, that's not stuff that you necessarily want to drop on your feet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think a lot of float centers have probably taken glass out of their area already in terms of... Uh, cups and stuff that customers drink but so you know concerns about broken glass about dropping things that you're cleaning with or you know heavy other equipment during like deep cleans or something if maybe you're doing filter changes or stuff like that there might be some concern in there for for what sort of shoes you're wearing so yep and the same thing can actually go for things like long sleeves and stuff like that too so uh yeah just something to, to look into on the safety side yeah and then in terms of like the customer service side, that one is kind of the most up to your own personal taste, I think. Uh, you mean like the side where it's like you don't want to offend customers, like you want to set a dress code so that you have some kind of consistency? Well, set? there's, yeah, I mean, so there's some pragmatics to it, right? There's there's like, hey, if everyone's wearing like a t-shirt with your logo on it, then, then a customer knows who works there and yeah. they know who to yeah, go up yeah. to and ask questions to. And like, we don't do that. Like our people who work in our shop just wear kind of whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, for the most part, you can, it's pretty easy to tell who works there and who doesn't. Yeah. Um, sometimes the people standing behind the desk are these staff. That's <laughs> <laughs> kind of our policy. <laughs> um, no, but it's, you know, so it, it, it has a lot to do with just your business philosophy and like your yeah. business personality, your brand overall, whether or not you want this kind of polished, uniform looked people or... In our case, again, where we're going for this sort of like children's room chic design (laughs) and our policies tend to be as lackadaisical as we can manage them to be. And we really like people just kind of making float on their own. And so for us, it's like, again, as long as people are showing up and they don't like smell terrible and their clothes aren't totally ripped or or they just look like they, you know, came out of a Wolverine fight or something like that, (laughs) then, you know, it's like for us, it's it's good. Like we actually prefer people to dress more like how they want to dress because we feel like they'll be more comfortable on the job and and it just kind of creates that more friendly, casual environment that we like. Yeah. Um, and on the flip side, of course, yeah, again, you have the the uniformity and professionalism in some areas and, and for your business that just might be what you want. But all of that is is very personal, I guess. There's no right or wrong 
decision for that necessarily. Right. Or wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, so the the last one, which I actually do have some at least tactical tips or or advice on, would be what's useful dress for actually cleaning up uh, or or working a float center, right? Yeah, and that comes. I mean, mostly like people will figure this out pretty fast. Who work for <laughs> you? Like someone someone makes a mistake once, like wearing shoes they like into <laughs> into the float center, and then realizes they're never doing that again. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's the color of it a lot. Like you know. You you slowly fade out wearing any black clothes as you as you go into work your shift, um, and you know we have a we have a lot of employees that like to wear little aprons. Yeah, and so it's interesting even despite not having a dress code, um, some things have become really popular. Aprons, yeah, uh, for instance, have become really popular among our staff. It's uh, like almost uh, unanimous now. I think that people just wear those when they're on shift. Um, which is really cool. I mean, they have little pockets that you can store things like uh, external thermometers in or extra earplugs or something. Uh, nice for carrying stuff around, little rags. And also just stops your clothes from getting salty when you are hey. running around and cleaning. And if you need to go straight into customer service, you're either wearing an apron, which looks a little bit or dirty, or you can even take it off really quick and, and just be kind of in full clean clothes, which is nice. Yeah. Um, like rubber, rubber shoes. shoes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Actually, uh, this, this one maybe does go into the HR stuff too as, as well, but you want shoes that have some slip resistance to them. Because yeah. you're moving fast and you're cleaning, you know, salty floor and stuff like that. And there's, of course, a lot of slip resistance built into your construction. But still, the people who are, like, the most likely to slip are the ones who are, like, darting from room to room every single transition trying to clean up salt water. So there's there's something to that, having kind of good grip on your on your shoes. Yep. Good grip and washable. Like, if you can just yeah. throw your shoes under the sink and you're not worried about them, like, that is absolutely the type of shoe that you want for a float tank center. Yeah, for sure. Someone out there, some young enterprising soul is going to make float shoes at some point, I think. <laughs> like, <laughs> like shoes to wear in your float center that kind of look cool but are entirely made of rubber. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good, a good market. If you do them, let us know. We'll be your first customers, absolutely. <laughs> Our address is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's some, some just practical ones. Again, apron, good shoes. Um, same thing, like if you're, if you're having people wear long sleeve shirts and that's part of your dress code, reconsider that too. It gets really hot inside yeah. the float tank rooms. Yeah. And so even like, you know, dress shirts that have long sleeves, it's like, man, you, you'll be sweating through those so fast if you're running around during the transitions, especially in these high humidity float rooms. So something that you can wear either shorts or short sleeve shirts or something that's more breathable also tends to be really good. Yeah. I will, uh, I'll end this by by saying that oh, we did, this, huh? yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, we have had a dress code before at Float On. Just kind of full disclosure, there was a period of time where uh, Jake, Marty, and I we'd be working on Fridays in the shop together, and we had a strict policy of formal Fridays. So every Friday in the shop, we'd actually <laughs> wear <laughs> button-up T-shirts and ties. And we quickly realized that we had to uh, also have tie clips so our ties didn't dip into the float tanks as we went around cleaning. Um, so that was it. Was a good little run that we had there. It was incredibly hot to wear that in our float center, but that was a uh, that was the dress code that we had at some point. So I'm actually kind of sad that our staff doesn't do formal Fridays anymore. Yeah, we should make them. We should force make it mandatory. That's right, mandatory <laughs> formal, formal Fridays, Fridays every day. <laughs> Except one day we'll give them a break from it. You know. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, our opinions on dress codes. Um, I might even call those facts on dress codes, actually, <laughs> less than opinions. And as always, if you have your own questions that you want us to rant about, send them in to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast. All right, talk to you later. Bye.